how's it going? I hope that was a very peaceful look into our cut flower garden. Everything is starting to really thrive and produce growth and produce flowers and fruit and all that sort of thing out there. It's really exciting to see, especially with this heat wave. In fact, I cut those blooms yesterday morning, put them in the root cellar and it's like 60 degrees in there with the intention of going back and making an arrangement. And I just couldn't because we were watering. We just are watering a lot these days. In the morning, we go touch up water in the afternoons just to help everything survive. It was 106 yesterday, 104 today, and for the foreseeable future. The next 10 days show 104 and 106 degree temperatures. So what we're gonna do today is make an arrangement. I don't really even have a plan for what what I want to make or what kind of vase I want to use any of that but we'll create something fun uh, but I also have a few things to show you so I got this yesterday in the mail I've already started to order seeds for next year's garden there's just certain varieties I was want to make sure to have or there may be some new ones that I don't want them to sell out I want to try them so I always like to when it's really hot or really cold seed shopping is always really fun and then I also have a few things from Gardener's Supply that they sent out to show you and then Hoselink sent out a weeding tool so Hoselink has the retractable hoses that we have everywhere around our property and I love those so they've come up with this weeding tool that Aaron's tried out and said it's pretty cool but um, I haven't tried it yet so I thought we would try that together let's head to the barn first couple of things from Gardener Supply are sitting in this gator here this is the first one I actually need to go put these out in the garden I just planted a couple rows of sunspot sunflowers these are slate plant ID tag so slate they're really pretty I really like how they look they come with a white wax pen or marker or whatever I don't know pencil wax pencil which I'm assuming holds up to water so that this won't rub off or uh, wash off with water a little bit hard to write with those and it's not quite like you can tell what it says so I'm happy with that I'm gonna do one with a chalk marker which here in our area may work because we get hardly any rain so I don't think it'll wash away with this and this is what we used to do on all of our chalkboards down at the garden center even the outdoor ones and we were fine so I'm gonna just try it on one because I think it'll be brighter and easier to read but then the rest I'll use the wax marker for I scrounged this chalk marker out of one of our cupboards I've had it for I don't even know how many years hopefully it's still good Ooh, that's too much dang it Okay, so I just planted where the cabbages were. I planted sunspot sunflowers on either side of the pathway. They're two foot tall sunflowers with huge 10 inch size sunflowers on them. Super exciting. So I have this one with chalk marker, which you can clearly see what it says. And then I got a little bit messy with my chalk marker, but the rest of it is wax pen. So we'll put this one, the wax one on this side, and we'll see how they hold up. Again, I think the uh, ones with the marker will be okay given the fact that we get no rain here hardly ever and nothing out here is overhead water so usually the chalk marker will come off if you have a wet rag and just wipe it off um, so we'll see it'll be kind of a fun test to see how they do uh, because I do like to be able to see what it says a little bit easier than the wax pen okay the next thing we have here it looks like from what I can read through the plastic I haven't even opened these these are self-watering inserts for pots which is very interesting let's open it up Okay, we got a long thing right here. Let's see, capillary strips and an accordion. Adjustable self-watering insert for pots and planters. So it has a capillary strip, which is this, the fill tube, which is this, the water level indicator, which I'm think, guessing is this, and then the reservoir. Okay, so I think that this is how it works. We have the water reservoir here, which when it's all the way its full length, it holds five quarts of water. It squeezes down though to eight inches wide if you've got a smaller container. And at that point it holds one and a half quarts of water. 
um, you will end up having soil below it and then you'll put soil on top of it before you'll rest this capillary mat. So there'll be a little bit of soil between the reservoir and the capillary mat and that's what wicks up moisture and brings it up. Um, so this will lay on top of the soil and even kind of go up our fill tube here a little bit. Maybe we'll plant it up today just so we can test it out. So this is your fill tube, which this part right here unscrews if you need it to be taller or you can screw it in a little bit more if you need it to be shorter. And then this is your float right here. This is how you'll know how much water is in the reservoir. When it's all the way down, which you can do one of two things. To know if it's all the way down and the reservoir is empty, you can either make a mark on this or you can cut it level with the top here. So you know if it's level with the top or if the mark is right there that this is empty and needs more water. Um, if it's full, then it'll float. So either the mark will appear up higher or if you've cut it, you know, the cut end will be higher if that makes sense. I think cutting it is probably the way to go. Although I don't know, I mean, maybe you wanna leave the length just in case you use a taller pop from one year to the next. I just don't know if it's like desirable to have that sticking up. Plants usually distract though from that. Anyway, let me grab some potting soil and some plants. Maybe we'll just take this into the greenhouse quick. So this is my caprese pot, I guess. I've got five of the good-hearted tomatoes. Basil, the basil basil in the center. And then this is where the water fill tube is. There's a little piece that goes on top. Easier to do with two hands, but um, that protects any dirt or whatever from getting down in there. So when it's empty, this will be all the way down. And you can see it through the lid right here. And then when it's full and has water in it, that stick will be up inside the lid like that. I watered it all in just from overhead normally because wet soil wicks water better than dry soil. And self-watering containers just do not work properly if you start off with dry soil and expect them to suck the moisture up that they need. And these need to root in a little bit better too before they'll reach the area where the water is being distributed. Um, so I will water overhead for probably the first week or 10 days or so. It's so hot right now that they'll root in really quickly. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see how this works because it's nice to have something that's adaptable. Okay, I've got a couple more things from Gardeners to show you. So this right here is a cord and steel raised bed and Benjamin's cozy coop. Paul assembled it here in the studio because it's a lot cooler in here. So it arrives to you looking like steel, you know, kind of a nice gray silver color, and then it ages out. You can actually do, there's a specific blend of like hydrogen peroxide and I don't know. Uh, I think the recipe is on Gardner's website uh, and we will link to this so you can find everything but it ages out to a kind of rust warm brown rust color uh, which is non-corrosive. It's not the type of rust that's going to eat away at your container but this is a two by four. Did I already say that? Two by four interior size. You can get extenders to make it longer if you want and I think there's other multiple sizes available too not just this one. Definitely has an interesting vibe to it. I can see this one sitting in some sort of like modern sort of setting um, or rustic even, rustic industrial, once it has that warm patina on it. Uh, it's definitely very, very interesting. And it's fun to see raised beds made out of different things um, that fit different vibes. But this may end up here somewhere um, so we can try it out and see how it does, especially through our heat. Um, it may end up with one of our friends at one of their houses. We may take it somewhere and plant it up for them. But I think it's really neat. The last things from Gardeners I wanna show you are these plant supports. I forgot I put them up here in the flower bed where it's a little nicer to look at them. Um, so this one is a single stem plant support, 46 inches tall there. And then this one right here is 30 inches tall, so depending on what you need to stake. They're just something um, nice and sturdy and a little bit more decorative. Uh, so maybe I should look into getting some more of these for my delphiniums. Wouldn't that surprise everybody? If all my delphiniums were staked up, I'd probably feel more inspired to stake them if I had pretty stakes like this for every single one. And then this one here is in the same line. It's an Arden uh, grow-through support. Hopefully you can see that okay. Kind of bright right here. 
Um, so each one of these stakes go in individually and then this ring just inserts into them like that. So you can put it around something that you just kind of want to cradle that's a little bit wider. So huge thank you to Gardener Supply for sending out those things. It's fun to show you guys and I love getting mail like that. Now I need to go locate that weeding tool. I'm not sure where Aaron put it. So this is the weeder right here. It's basically a tool to help you weed without having to bend over a whole bunch of times. Um, so it's got four little spikes at the bottom and that's what you put around the weed and then you can tamp it in with your foot right here and then you pry back, kind of like a shovel, and it pops the weed out and then you can either use your foot on this lever to help push the weed off the spikes or um, the handle, you can do it somehow from the handle. So we're going to try this out here. We're standing out in the new property right now. There's the cut flower garden and the berry beds. And here's a whole bunch of weeds. And these are all uh, puncture vines. So kind of excited to try this weeder out on these because they have little thorns all over around them. Anyway, we'll give it a shot. So we push, push it in. Pry, oh, pry it back. And then release. Look at that. Okay, try it out a few more times. Oop, that didn't work. Nope. Let's try it on that one. This one is stubborn. There's a couple of weeds here. One is in the gravel and one is kind of right on the edge of the gravel. I kind of want to try this out, see how it does in graveled areas versus mulched. I just can't get under it with the gravel. It does pick a little bit of soil up into the gravel, but not bad. So let's go to a grassy area, try it there. Oh man. I'm not sure if it's because our grass is so wet, but it was just like kind of pulling up big chunks of grass and I ended up having to pull this by hand. Hmm. Maybe we try one more spot of grass. Maybe a different lawn that's not as wet. Okay, well this time it definitely pulled the weed up, but it also pulls a little bit of grass up too. You can't really see, because the rest of the grass kind of fills in. Cool. All right, so my thoughts after extremely limited use, in a mulch flower bed area, it worked really well. I would think if you have really sandy soil, it might be a little bit harder because it does pinch a little bit of soil around the roots of the plant to help yank it out. Um, I do think that that's beneficial. The graveled area, it was hit and miss. One of the weeds, it worked really well. The other one, it didn't. Uh, I think it depends on if you can get those spikes in around the root of the plant. And with your graveled areas, you'll have some that are really hard, like where the wheels of cars and things are driving all the time and then toward the edges it may not be quite as hard and you can get in there a little bit but it's hard to work any kind of tool around a gravel area uh, lawn one lawn that's drier it worked better than in the really wet lawn I think I would have to give it quite a bit more use to see if it's something that I would use on a regular basis but I can see where it would be very helpful for a lot of people those of you who maybe have a hard time getting up and down like knees or back and and what have you there are some days where it would be really nice like days where I'm a little more tired or whatever uh, when I was pregnant that would have been a perfect tool for me because I had a hard time, especially toward the end, getting up and down, but I still like to have a nice looking garden. So I think it definitely has its place. I would have to put it through more paces though to see if it was something that I would use a lot. Uh, but I was pleased with how it worked today. Okay, now we're gonna head somewhere where I can open up the seeds. All right, up in the sun porch with the fan on above me. It's not too hot up here yet. We wanna open this box of seeds up. Now, Johnny's seed packets, one thing about them is that they're not that great looking. They're just white with text, so I probably won't hold a bunch of things up to the camera to show you, but we'll put a bunch of images up on the screen so you can see what each one of these things will look like. Hopefully, if I don't screw up growing them somehow. And I bought all of these. Johnny's did not send, I don't work with Johnny's at all. Um, and I usually get everything that I can at my parents' garden center. These are things that I can't get there, so 
anyway, or in the quantity that I need from there. All right, so look at this. This is exciting. I don't even know how many packets I ordered, but I kind of went to town a little bit. So let's just start in with this packet right here. I don't know if these are organized in any special way. Nope. We've got Cosmos in with pumpkins and with sweet peas. So we're going to just be all over the place and I'll probably organize as we go. So I'll create little piles of each. Some of the um, things like Cosmos, I ordered a bunch of different types of varieties. So first off, we have a specialty pumpkin called Baby Bear. So it's a very small orange pumpkin, um, not as small as like the Jack B. Littles. I think they kind of range from one to two-ish pounds, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and they're a little bit more rounded and they have really pretty stems that Benjamin and uh, will really like it. Samantha, she'll be what, a year and 10 months? next year when I actually grow those. Actually, I could have time to put them in the ground now if I still, I have one hill that didn't make it through a windstorm. Anyway, I don't know at what point, she might care next year a little bit. Uh, we've got a zinnia called uh, ben Benary's Giant Lime. I did not, I don't think I planted any actual lime ones, which I meant to plant more of those than any other variety. And somehow in the zinnia game, I was not prepared this year. Uh, okay, so Fizzy White Cosmos. And I'm gonna kinda roll through each one of these, you guys, because um, we still have a flower arrangement to make, and I'm sure this video is long already. Prairie Sun Rebecca, I have these blooming in front of the chicken coop this year. I started in the winter sewing method. Stock called Quartet Rainbow. Sweet Pea called Pulsar. I have another Sweet Pea in here called Nimbus. I have some of those growing this year. I have a Snapdragon called Potomac Ivory. Cosmos called Cupcakes Blush, and I got two packets of those. Where's my Cosmo pile? Right there. Then we've got the Lysianthus, the Arena 3 Apricot, and a Lysianthus called Arena 3 Red. Buplurum Green Gold, which this is one of the ones I seeded out really early this spring and I thought I lost every one of them because we had that huge, huge windstorm the exact, like the same day, that evening after I planted all my seeds. And I would say I got about half or a little bit more of what I seeded came up and I cut some today. There's, there's a few stems in the buckets that we'll use. Um, a Nigella or Love in a Mist called Albion Green Pod and we've got Albion Black Pod, two of those. Uh, we have a pincushion flower called Merlot Red and a stock called Cat's White. Cat's White, Cat's White. I don't know about stock. I don't know why I ordered more. I always grow it and then I don't hardly ever use it in cut arrangements. Um, a single stem sunflower called Sun Bright. Oh, more pumpkins. I'm refreshing my memory on what these look like. This one's called Cinnamon Girl, which is another, it looks like smaller one. It's like really round with a really thick stem. So three to five pounds, three to four fruits per plant on average. And I usually do three to five plants like seeds per hill. So Cinnamon Girl, there's my pumpkins. A pumpkin called Pipsqueak, which I believe is another orange pumpkin, but they have really wild stems. Four to eight pound average on these. Uh, sweet Pea, another one called Streamer's Chocolate. Next one is Sahara Rudbeckia, which is one of my favorite Rudbeckias. They did so well for me last year. This year, my seedlings didn't do that great. Um, I was a little bit hands off uh, this year, and I let them go a little bit long between some waterings a couple times. And um, so anyway, I'm not sure that I'm gonna get much out of them this year, but I wanted to be prepared for next year because I think my ducks will be a little bit more in a row because I will not have a newborn in the house. It'll be a little bit easier to focus more of my attention. Um, Starburst Lemon Aura um, Branching Sunflower. A Snapdragon called Potomac Yellow, which mine are blooming right now and gorgeous. I cut some today or yesterday. A Bridal Pink Snapdragon. Larkspur Fancy Smoky Eyes. A White Finch Orlea, which I'm actually gonna seed this right now like you're supposed to do succession crops and mine is so absolutely gorgeous it's those white discs that i cut um, that you just saw a acorn winter squash called starry night so green with yellow and then there's more orlea there and then a fama deep blue pincushion flower where did i put that uh, right here uh, cherry caramel flocks uh, madame butterfly red snapdragons Guys, I did a few reds for this next year. A zinnia called Creamy Yellow Giant Dahlia Flowered. And then a Nasturtium Bloody Mary. Well, those are bigger packets. Let's 
see. Those are more Lysianthus. So we've got Dublini Rose Pink and Voyage 2 Blue. More Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. Mine's just now it sat there forever after I planted them out this year and they were just little itty bitty and they just sat and sat and sat. And now they're starting, they're about this big now. They're starting to put on a lot more growth. So I got two packets of those. Pro Cut Lemon Sunflowers. Do I have a hair? Yes, I do. As long as it's not a spider. Uh, Cinderella Peach Zinnias. Madame Butterfly Ivory Snapdragons a foxglove fox glove called sugar plum this is one that doesn't bloom the first year but oh it's so fun you guys to start foxgloves do enormously well for me inside uh is in terms of seed starting foxgloves and delphidiums are always huge and beautiful by the time i plant them out um, and they always do well for me out in the landscape so the first year i did this last year i had two varieties the um can't remember uh pink gin and there was a kind of a peachy colored one. Anyway, uh, no, Cafe Cream. It was like an off-white. They were both types that I planted out the plants last year, just saw green leaves. They looked like healthy plants. And then this year they bloomed for me and they were both absolutely gorgeous. Uh, okay, then we have Oklahoma Salmon Xenia, a stock called uh, Iron Marine. We've got a winter squash called Tetsu Kabuto. Oh yeah, this one's really cool. It's so, so dark green. It says it's a kabocha. I don't know how you say it, kabocha butternut cross that produces high yields even under stress. That is the squash for me. And then we've got pro cut plum sunflowers and more blurum, but blurum's hard for me to say. Somehow I ordered more Albion black pod nigella or love in a mist, a, spe a specialty pumpkin called wolf. Okay, so these pumpkins, I bought one last year after like harvesting, I think we had over 500 was the count in the very end after I kind of harvested some stragglers um, after my initial big harvest. But um, we went to the farm stand because I still love to go to farm stands even though I grow so much of our own stuff here. And they had this massive, it was a big pumpkin and the stem on it was like this big around. It was just so crazy. And they told me that the variety was called Wolf. So I ordered some of the seeds because I think they're so cool. Misty Lavender Larkspur. Uh, carmine, 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 larkspur, a starburst greenburst branching sunflower, cherry brandy rudbeckia, starburst greenburst sunflower, I must have liked that one, hybrid jack-o'-lantern called Igor, I think that's how they say to pronounce it. It's pronounced Igor. Yeah, it's pronounced Igor. Perfect Halloween jack for attracting attention, whether at the farmstead or the front door, tall and lurking. Igor is very uniform in, in size, deep dark orange skin, deep ribs, and a pronounced shoulder creating a foreboding look. <laughs> if a pumpkin can be foreboding, Igor is that. Um, averages 25 to 35 pounds per pumpkin. Mm, that's exciting. Fancy pink with white bee larkspur, which is some of the larkspur we harvested today. We've got some uh, Camelot cream foxglove, some more, was that what I had before? I thought it was cafe cream. Maybe it's different. Either way. And then a Voyage to Light Apricot Lysianthus. We're almost done, guys. More Bloody Mary nasturtiums. See, I think what happened is I did this seed order in two different sittings. And <laughs> I think I kind of double ordered some stuff. Oh well, I'll go through it. Queen Red Lime Zinnias. Queen Lime with Blush Zinnias. Larkspur called uh, Light Pink. A acorn winter squash called Honey Bear. Oh yeah, I like these are really cute. They always look so pretty in the pictures too, like all shined up and clean. But it says it's just right for single servings when halved. halved. Mariachi, pure white Lysianthus. Oh, that one didn't come, like most of the Lysianthus come in their own little tubes inside the packet. This one did not. Ooh. Queen Lime with Blush Zinnias. Potomac Apple Blossom Snapdragons, one of my favorite Snapdragon dragons ever. It's pink and white and they're just so delicate and um, like feminine looking. They're so cute, pretty. Vintage Brown Stock, Cat's Yellow Stock. We've got Delft Blue Nigella, Love and a Mist. That is one of the ones that I harvested today. In fact, it was in that little video I posted on Instagram where I, I had brought the arrangement out here to the sun porch and I started to take some pictures and a butterfly just flew in here and landed on the arrangement inside the sun porch. Um, and so I had a lot of you guys asking me what those love and a mist, what variety they were inside the arrangement and they were Delft blue, they're so pretty. We've got salmon rose pincushion flowers, 
Cherokee Sunset Rudbeckia. Pro Cut White Light Sunflowers. The white lights, I grew them last year, and they were the first one, they were the first ones to actually flop over in the garden, which is weird because they were the middle. We had that huge section, 1,700 feet of sunflowers in a, um, oh, I can't remember how long each section was. I think they were like 40 by 80, something like that. They were big. Anyway, um, I didn't provide any support for the sunflowers. They kind of all supported each other. So I had like these massive sunflowers at the edges. And then I had tucked some of these white lights were right in the center and they all kind of flopped over. I don't know if maybe they weren't getting enough airflow so they were weak. Um, the ones on the outer portion were really strong. I, they got all the wind and maybe they just kind of grew to be able to withstand it. And so maybe that was a problem, but they were, gorgeous. I took a picture of just that variety of sunflower in kind of a powdery blue vase, pottery vase, and I just thought they were so pretty. And then more Delft Blue Nigella. So that's it for seeds for today. This is a start on 2022. I mean, that's a lot of seed right there. I'm gonna be filling in um, once I take all my inventory. I need to update my inventory because I try to keep it up to date as much as possible, but I'm like rolling through it so fast in the spring that typically what I do is I take the seed packet from my seed storage and I use what I need and then I've got a separate pile with all the seed packets that I still have stuff left in sitting to the side and then a pile of empties so I know which seeds I don't have any of them left and what seeds I have a little bit left of and then I update my inventory so I know whether or not like uh, whether or not I need to reorder or I can decide like oh I don't really know if I'm gonna like this one so I probably won't reorder um, and that sort of thing so I'm gonna take all of these put them in alphabetical order in this box so I can easily update my inventory. Then they'll go into my like main seed stash, which is kind of insane. I need to get bigger boxes. Let me tell you though, I mean, I know a lot of us are in the same boat. We get kind of excited and we maybe overdo with seeds a little bit, but they keep for so dang long. And it's so nice, like this time of year, we just dug the anemones today. So here I am at the end of June with a three by four raised bed empty. I've already planted all my tomatoes, my peppers are all in, beans are in, corns are in, corns. <laughs> corn is in so I could plant some flowers in there and so it's so nice to have all of the seeds like at your fingertips and then you can just go through and be like what do I want to plant what kind of zinnia do I want to put in and that in that little space and then that way you don't have to go you know searching or order or whatever you've all got them on hand so anyway I'll get the rest of them from my parents garden center usually I like to get a lot of our um, standby varieties the ones that I know do really well here from the bulk bins down there. And so typically a lot of my vegetable varieties come from there, corn and beans and peas and carrots and lettuce and spinach and uh, kale and chard, radishes. What else? White bunching onions, herbs, all the things. So, okay, let me clean this up and then we're gonna go get the flowers and get set up for flower arrangement. We are gonna be in the studio for the last part of this video because it's a lot cooler in here. It's starting to get really warm. I wanted to do the arrangement up in the sun porch because things just look better with natural light. But what we'll do is I'll make the arrangement in here uh, and then I'll go put it out somewhere really quick so you guys can see what it looks like with better natural light. This is my setup right here. It's nice to have a table like this is adjustable so I can make it really tall, makes it really comfortable. But this is the container I'm gonna be using. It's been years, I think, since I've actually used that container for an arrangement and then I've got floral tape I'm going to create a floral tape grid mark on the top that's going to kind of be my frog to hold all the branches in place now I just will go through what I've harvested here we've got the firefly peach sky yarrow right there isn't that pretty all those colors off the same plant and then several different types of larkspur here I can't remember all the different names this one probably has lavender in the name or maybe that's earl gray this one's the fancy pink with white bee I know that Anyway, they're all pretty. And then in this bucket, which I think is beautiful, just all together like that, the yellows and whites, we've got the bupplerum right here. And this is the one we got seeds for today. It's a really beautiful filler flower, kind of the yellow and chartreuse green. A couple of different colors of snapdragons here. We've got the white and the soft yellow. Let's keep spinning here. We've got honeywort. Isn't that, I think it's syrinth or, I, I can't remember how to pronounce that, but it's a really gorgeous leaf because it's kind of like that blue green almost iridescent quality with the purple blooms this is the first dahlia that i had bloomed this year it's kind of starting to fall apart i think it was a little bit too aged when i picked it so i don't think i'm gonna actually use it it's already lost a couple uh, petals the white orlea right there some of them like if i knock all of the old blooms off the seed heads or what's left after the blooms are gone is actually really pretty still so i'll probably use a mixture of in full bloom and then just 
seed heads. In this bucket, we have Boscobel roses, some nigella, bunny tails grass. And then our last bucket, we've got just an assortment of sweet peas, and then we've got the hot and cold nephophia blooms. So I think I'm gonna use a lot of these things in the same arrangement. So it's just gonna be very full of color. And Aaron actually just came in, and he's gonna set up a camera for me. So if you see my mouth moving, we're actually talking about the trees we wanna order for next year, because <laughs> we have to put the tree order in by the end of today. So anyway, multitasking, let's get after it. So I did start with a tape grid on the top of the vase. And then you may have noticed I popped a little piece of foam in there. I don't often use it, but I uh, thought because this vase is such a huge, it's not really a vase, it's a big bowl. Uh, because I knew I wanted to make this kind of big and um, it's such a wide mouth vessel, I thought it might help hold things in place. And I typically get a few uses out of my foam to be honest, until it kind of falls apart. So I don't use it all of the time. So I started off by tucking in the bupplerum branches right in here. And then I went with the sweet pea branches and I just kind of do the biggest bulkiest stuff first. And then I kind of start tucking in some of the biggest striking color and stuff around the edge. And then I just kind of build from there. There's really no huge method to the madness. This is all that was left. This is all, I mean, I could probably tuck all of this stuff in there to be honest. Uh, but this is it. I'm gonna create just a little kind of mason jar bouquet with the rest of this. But I did wanna show you the backside as well. So it looks pretty from both sides here. And doesn't that, that bupplerum right there that's just kind of taking up that space is looking so pretty. Anyway, just kind of a free form, more open, bouquet here. So now I'm going to go place it outside and probably on a couple of different surfaces inside the house. Um, I've got a couple good spots where I get some good light and I'll try to get some pictures um, and video of what this looks like in the setting where it's going to stay. But that's pretty much it for today's video. Kind of a mishmash menagerie of stuff going on. It's always fun to share some of the fun stuff that comes in the mail. And then I like to throw in a flower arrangement here and there uh, because we do a lot of planting and a lot of maintenance um, stuff, but we don't stop often and do the fun, like why we do all of the maintenance and the planting. I do a lot of it so I can do stuff like this and I enjoy it so much. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.